so up next, um, I'm gonna have you pronounce your name. Uh, I'm not. It looks like it looks like a version of Matthew. Matt Matthaus. Matthaus, yeah, that's that's right. So it, it's a German version of of Matthew. So it's Very fine cool. if you call me Matthew. <laughs> So Madhouse is a senior consultant at Performix AKM3, and that's a global performance agency that advises companies on search engine optimization, um, SEO strategies. Uh, Madhouse has developed strategies for large international brands, uh, optimizing their websites to increase organic traffic as well as App Store optimization. And we've been hearing a lot about App Store optimization in the last couple of years in digital marketing. So that's an exciting topic uh, as well. And um, um, Madhouse's presentation is about content marketing throughout the customer's journey. That's a point of view that I think all of us need to always put our shoes in the customer uh, perspective and uh, helping us be successful. Um, so without further ado, Madhouse, take it away. OK, great. Uh, yeah, thanks for the introduction. Um, so my name um, is as so Mike already mentioned, this is Matthias. I'm working now um, since 2011 in Berlin for Performix ACAM3. You can, you can hear me, right? Yes, yeah, sounds yeah. great. Good. Yeah. Um, and today I want to talk about content marketing and um, how we understand content marketing and how we also leverage content, existing content, to ensure that we satisfy the customer on all um, stages of the customer journey. So normally when we talk about about SEO, we often just focusing on uh, getting the right rankings for getting uh, for having the right keywords. But nowadays, I would say it's it's more a broader approach where we definitely have to point out why a brand or a domain is authority an authority for for the industry. And this is uh, what my speech will be about. And I would start directly. So um, one thing I want to start with is not a cruise. I'm not if anyone is familiar with AIDA. AIDA is a cruise, but um, I want to talk more about the acronym behind AIDA. So the marketing and advertising acronym, which is standing for attention, interest, and desire, and action. And normally when we talk about uh, performance-based um, channels, we often think just of the action. So what, what we try to achieve is to to have a download, to have a registration, or to have a conversion on our website. But when we really think of the customer journey, how customers um, try to get the right information about specific products, about specific um, ideas they have in mind, we definitely have to think of the first three letters. So to have the attention, to have or to, to try to get interest of, of the customer and also to, to address the desire. And also when we have a look on, on the demand and normally when we talk about action and about conversions, we often t talk about cover and demand. But nowadays it's not just about cover and demand, it's more about creating demand. So why should a customer exactly convert at our website or register at our website and not on, on, on the other websites we have um, in the World Wide Web, and this is something where we think nowadays we have to think of potential customers who didn't really have our brand in mind, but they have a specific problem, and this is what we want. So we want to first to create demand to cover it afterwards, and covering it means really to to have the conversion and. Um, Creating demand is more for the branding, for the image of a brand, so to be present through whole phases of the customer. So this means what we definitely want to 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 um, to, 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 to go on is really that we have <clears throat> the right content pointing to the right face. And when we think of um, of branding and of creating demand, so maybe someone is first searching for a specific topic, for a specific problem, but they don't have the right product or the right service in mind. So more, it's more like a product problem solving approach instead of just providing the right product. And in this presentation, I want to show you four case studies um, where I would say that these are brands or companies which definitely know how to interact with a potential customer 
before the conversion and after the conversion and also within the whole purchase process. And the first example is uh, a do-it-yourself home improvement online store from, from the States, it's Loves. And um, for example, when you talk about a specific idea or a specific problem, so for example, we are moving in a new flat, in a new apartment house, and we want to renovate our bathroom. And there are a lot of different bathrooms re regarding the size, or a lot of different uh, bathrooms regarding regarding the budget um, the customers have. So Loss is already providing the right ideas for someone who just know that they want to renovate the bathroom because the bathroom is, is really old, or for example, that they already just have a small budget and they have to, to, um, to, to focus on the budget and, and get the, the best solution for, for the home. And so here it's more like providing ideas without any sales focus or any conversion focus. So it's just like an idea um, generator for someone who is just interested in, in remodeling or renovating the bathroom. But when we talk about bathroom renovation, we definitely have to talk about tiles. And for sure, when you, you want to renovate your bathroom, you need new tiles. Maybe you, you don't know which kind of, of, of tiles and which type, what kind of rankings you have. And this is something where uh, a brand could already show the, exper uh, the, the expertise and also the authority that they say, uh, you, you are not just, or we are not just an online store or offline store where you can buy your stuff. We also can give you guidance on the right product you are searching for. It's, so it's more like um, be the shop assistant online. So to, to, to provide the right information at the right place of the, of the customer journey. And also when we, see both examples, on one side the ideas, on the other side uh, the, the buying guide, we definitely see it's, it's more a branding topic, it's more creating demand, so that we definitely show someone that they can also renovate their, um, their bathroom with just um, a small budget, or they could even get a lot of more attractive bathroom when they, when they just fix some, some issues or something like this, so it's more like creating the demand to, to provide a conversion in the, in the next week or in, in two weeks, whatever. So it's definitely not focusing on a conversion, but when someone has already the idea and they, they have the plan to renovate um, their bathroom, they can then use the products, they can use the categories to, to navigate through the whole shop and then also to find the right products they need for the wall, they need for the, for the floor and so on. And this is also something where we would say it's really important not just to sell a product but also to understand um, how they can, uh, or to, to guide the, the customer how they can install the tiles and also if, if they need any additional material that they get the checklist what kind of stuff they still need next to the tiles. And this is something they would say within the customer journey it's more like covering demand where someone already knows they need tiles, they need additional um, guidance on installing the tiles, also additional material, and here definitely we are focusing on conversions. So it's, it's like when we're focusing on keywords um, which, which are, which, which are um, including online or shop or buy or whatever. And of also what, what sometimes we see if, if an online brand already had a conversion, they totally forget what are the next steps. So for sure, someone is renovating the bathroom, but what we what would be the next step to to go on? So for 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 e-commerce um, retailer, it's quite important that they don't just have one conversion, but that they have existing customers come every time back to them, and they definitely know all information they need. They will find on the website. Another another example is is the cons uh, consumer electronics. Crutch field, where I personal, personally every time have to consult my parents when they new, need some some new TV, a new TV, or they need a computer or something like this. So often my dad is asking, yeah, what's the difference between LCD and plasma? What are the benefits? What are um, what, what is better for me as, as maybe um, 
someone uh, who is not the youngest and who don't need any uh, 3D and any curve and all this stuff. So they definitely have to inform what are the differences between the two technologies, but also what kind of size they need. So do I need really HD or full HD or is 4K something I really need for, 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 for a family where just two, um, two older people are living or it's enough to have just a full HD television and, and 40, 40 uh, inches or whatever. So this is something where we would say it's, it's more in the, in, in the first two phases where, where we try to have the attention of our brands. We try um, to get some interest regarding the products and we are really creating demand. So we definitely can guide the customer through the customer journey. So to say, for you as, 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 uh, as an older, um, older person, you don't need a 4K TV. A customer will be enough with 100 centimeters um, um, screen size. And that's more about imaging and branding of the brand. So to be, to be always visible for someone who is dealing with the topic next to your main products you are selling. And also when we then think of someone who already knows that they need a plasma TV um, in, in, in a specific size, that we already give them some information um, to describe what is, for example, a USB port, or do I need a PC input um, um, connectivity, or do I need four HDMI connectors, or is maybe just two enough? And also when we talk about related information that we could point out on a product landing page already uh, related infos and related um, articles like how, how to mount a TV or how to define the size of a TV and so on. And also here, when someone is really looking for a product, searching within a category, um, we definitely know that they want to buy a telev uh, television, uh, a TV, and that they definitely want to cover their demand. So it's more about the, the conversion and not about just getting information and getting the, the right product for them. So also here what, what we can think of is what is the next step after someone already received um, their product, they, they have it at home, what would be the next step? So the next step is definitely to show them how to mount a TV on the wall or maybe how um, which, which kind of distance they need between their uh, TV and the couch, or also how to connect uh, the TV with the setup box or with the PlayStation or whatever the, the, uh, the person has, um, has in their living room. So this is also something where you still can guide your customer and also improve the experience of your brand by providing the right information. And su such information can also be used for retargeting or for email campaigns that after seven days or 14 days when you know someone received the, the TV, um, that you give them some guidance how to mount them or how to connect them or whatever. The third example is from the um, travel in, uh, industry. So travel in, industry is also a really, really big topic and you can have a lot of content on your site, um, starting with classic written content, but also you can have um, videos, you can have infographics or some, some, some tools to help someone um, ha having a better user experience. And I think uh, Rick Stevens' European Travel is a really good example where you see what kind of ideas and what kind of topics you can cover when you're, you're offering uh, European travels uh, for, for US citizens. And they are mainly focusing on, on the US market and they provide everything you need. So like travel tips, how to plan your uh, trip, um, how to find a good hotel in Europe, what are also the transportation possibilities. Like um, what I often hear is that um, the US guys are always surprised that Uber is not really working in, in Germany because the, the taxi lobby is that, that, that big and that mighty. So when you have a, the Uber app and you are here just, just ordering an Uber, you will get a Uber taxi because there aren't any private drivers out there, so this may be some information you could provide on, on, on a travel website to show them how to, to get um, through Europe or how to get through Germany. And also when we think of um, during the purchase process when someone is already on our website, they definitely know they want to go to Germany instead of France or Italy and they want to have like a trip of, of Germany, Austria and Switzerland. We 
also can give them some information about the weather. So what we should try is really to focus on the customer and to provide, in, um, pro to provide them all necessary information directly on, on our website. So we should try to avoid that a potential customer have to leave our website to get additional information. So like whether um, whether um, graphs or like the currency or like the local time. So everything what a US citizen would have in mind by planning a travel to Europe we should already have on our website. So the best best solution would be that they never need um, never need to, 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 to search for additional information on Google.com. Also when someone already has uh, booked their travel, um, then we can also provide additional information like um, the checklists for traveling um, to Europe, for example. What kind of, of information do you really need um, to travel in Germany? Do you need a visa? Do you need a specific insurance or whatever? So um, I think it's, it's, it's really more difficult to, to travel around Europe than in the US because you never leave the, the, uh, leave the state. But in, in Europe, you definitely have to um, had, have to know which kind of, of, of um, laws are in a specific country and also which kind of, of information you definitely need for all the countries. And also, when we think uh, about, about uh, what, is, what is next, what is after a specific, a specific trip, so if someone is back in the States and they already had the, the Europe uh, trip and they are back and they want, for example, to save um, there are the images on the laptop, so also you can give some additional information after the, the conversion, so after someone um, gets back home, that you give them um, all information they need. So what we try to, to achieve within such a content approach is really to satisfy this customer through the whole customer journey. So everything they really need from um, the first idea of traveling to Europe, about um, the travel tips, about the, the offer and, and the trip itself, within um, the, the, um, the questions after the journey. So we provide all the information right in place and they have a positive user experience and ne never need to change the website. The fourth case um, I want to show you is, is, is a case where we work on. So it's, it's a cigar online shop from Germany, which was founded um, also by some guys from, from our agency. And this is something where we say um, it's, it's like, like our showcase where we definitely can try a lot of, of strategies and, and see if they are working and if we can adapt them to different industries and markets. And for example, for someone um, it's really getting a passionate cigar smoker. They maybe have some um, some questions they want to get answered. So maybe it's quite interesting to have like a book. Um, it's it's a, it's a book you can buy online in the store, but also on Amazon, like a Kindle version, like like a normal book. And it's like the the beginner's book uh, for for cigar smokers. And here also we always reference to the shop itself. So it's not it's not like like a complete marketing um, marketing book, so where we say an Obligo is the best uh, brand uh, for cigars, but we want to give the right information someone has during um, during his customer journey by exploring cigars as um, maybe solution for them to, 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 uh, to hang out and, and to smoke a cigar instead of smoking cigarettes or whatever. So if someone is interested in this topic, Definitely, uh, like like a like a book for beginners would be the right right solution for them to start to get all questions answered, and then maybe when they are in the, in the second or third step of the customer journey and they think of buying the first cigars to test them and and also to to smoke them, we also have all relevant information on, on a product detail page. So we have, for example, how how strong the cigars are, how how long you can smoke them. Um, how thick they are. So all information you may need, and normally you would ask offline at, uh, uh, from, a, from a sales assistant, you will get online within the product detail page. So normally a customer who is interested in a specific cigar, they will get every, uh, every kind of information right on the website. They don't have to leave it. And also and we have, for example, um, movies about the cigars that um, the manufacturer 
is talking about how they created the cigar, why they named it, um, um, why they named the cigar um, that way they named it, and all the information you, you, you get you will have on the product detail page. But also what we had in mind is what is the next step. So if someone already ordered a cigar, they have it at home, what would be the next step for someone who, who will maybe become a passionate cigar smoker? So on one side, you definitely have questions like, like also beginner questions, maybe covered in the book, but also um, online. So for example, for, for cues like how to cut a cigar, how to store a cigar, or even um, how to smoke a cigar. So also when, when we perform the acute research and, and the um, audience, um, target audience research that we saw, there are a lot of people who don't really know how to smoke a cigar and how to cut them. So definitely this is some information we have to provide on our website. And also when we have a look on, on the impact of such quality content, we see that um, it, it's quite quite unique. Um, nobody's really writing about it. Um, no, no one, no one of our e-commerce uh, competitors is writing about how to cut a cigar. So it's quite easy with with appealing content to get on position top uh, top three or even to get on position one. And, and also we have included like like a small infographic on on the uh, on the on, on the website where we even got um, the first result of the universal search for images with the image box. So the first um, two two um, First two results are um, mainly us. And also, when we have a look on on the search visibility, so this, that's not uh, search metrics, that's search metrics. Um, also, a similar tool like like some search metrics where you can uh, calculate your visibility within organic search. We see that this kind of content approach, where we try to focus really on, on the customer and providing all needed information right in place where he is surfing and where he is searching for helped us to become an authority and to get um, to get to the top three positions for the main main keywords we are focusing on. So um, this were three uh, four ideas uh, I wanted to share with you. So to, to really to rethink um, how your customers interact with your website, what kind of information they need before they buy a product or before they research a product and after they purchase a product to ensure that you have a, a, a appealing, appealing website with all, informations, um, all information, all content in place and that you have a, a positive, um, definitely a positive user experience. Also, um, one idea is how to, how to get the content ideas and also how to use um, content seeding to, to also to leverage the new content or existing content is we often see um, when we work with bigger brands that they have a lot of data points. They have a lot of um, information you can use about the customers, but also there are a lot of uh, tools you can use, which are mainly free or which are like um, like search metrics, which are provided for researchers like like Cute Research or like uh, Conan Research. And here are eight examples we uh, we use to, to understand how a customer behaves on a client's website and one side we definitely search for the right terms. We, we use Google Trends and Google AdWords um, to understand um, how to theorize the topics. We use Google Analytics to, to get already an idea of the existing content um, and the existing customers. We, we can use social uh, media listening and social media monitoring to understand what kind of problems customers have. Um, we have also competitors which maybe already are working on specific topics or that you also have a look on, on big retailers like Amazon who uh, are selling each kind of product. Um, a market research could be also a benefit to understand your target audience better. Ask your support guys. Um, they often have uh, to struggle with, with emails and with calls of frustrated, frustrated um, customers and maybe you can help them um, instead of just showing the, the support phone number, um, show them the right content, or also for internal search, if you see and you analyze the internal search, a lot of people are searching for problems instead of products, so maybe you can also provide some guides on this. And when we talk about the seeding part, um, all kind of content is, is a benefit for SEO, so you can get rankings for informational-driven keywords like, like um, how to cut a cigar, 
but you also will benefit for your main conversion uh, conversion related keywords like like buying cigars or a cigar shop and what also is quite interesting um, that all the guided content it's quite nice to use it for retargeting or display email campaigns um, and even you could use uh, this kind of informational driven content for for paid campaigns because if there if the conversion is quite far away nobody normally would um, would um, would have AdWords for this kind of keyword so maybe you can get a lot of traffic uh, for, for a small budget to, to um, improve your brand authority within your audience group and to be present even if you don't have um, organic rankings in place but you will have AdWord campaigns and you can get um, a lot of cheap traffic. So to sum it up um, I would say is uh, what, what I would say the main uh, main topic would be not just to, um, to to look on the AIDA funnel and the AIDA mo model. It's more about convincing your client and satisfy your client that they come back, that they purchase a second time, and they also use um, um, referrals to your brand, to your products, to talk about the customer experience they had talk about the good service you provide, the good information you provide on your website before um, they were searching for a specific product within the purchase process, but also after they had, um, had, re uh, um, had um, received uh, the product at home that you still give them guidance and, and information about, about what they are really searching for. So that's all. Mateus, thank you very much. That uh, that was fascinating. I, I love those four case samples. Um, great detail and and uh, great action. Uh, you know, just real life examples that we can all relate to as a consumer, but also as marketers. Um, Mateus's contact information up on the screen. Um, take some time to write that down if you have any uh, detailed questions to ask him um, or if you need any assistance with what he specializes in. Uh, but, uh, you know, the thing that jumped out at me was case number two with Crutchfield. Um, basically because I'm a, you know, I was a teenager in the early 90s and you order that car stereo from the Crutchfield magazine and they would include a installation guide. And this, this was a, pub, a published instruction manual that uh, before the internet that Crutchfield would include um, that they r wrote themselves. And so it was a team of technical writers taking the time to help your, you know, your satisfaction with that process, making sure that the finished product was installed properly and successfully and that it worked. And um, that was something as, you know, as a 16 year old with my first <laughs> car, buying a car stereo, that's something that I loved. And uh, to see the companies and the brands that do it right digitally the, these days um, is a rare thing. And when you do see it, you're happy and you're excited and you want to share it. Um, so uh, I don't, we got a couple questions. Um, uh, before we're out of time, we got about four minutes here, and uh, um, and Mateus, you, you did already speak about the advantages of SEO performance. Um, but is there any other any other things that you can share uh, how this type of customer centric approach can benefit SEO performance? Um, so so as as a mainly SEO consultant, uh, I'm I'm still focusing on organic and, and on, on the nearly complete free traffic, but su such such customer centric approach also will benefit um, your social media. So you can use this kind of, of, of content um, to, to spread over social media um, channels. You can use it for email marketing. You can use it even for 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 paid advertising. That you say someone's searching for how to mount a TV on on the wall, and then you provide him the right um, right guide and also maybe you give him some, some ideas about, uh, about the material they need or the products they, need they have to, to, to buy additionally. So I would say like, like a customer and content centric approach will benefit all of your marketing channels. And even what, what we, um, we did with, with one customer is that uh, we used all the guides they had online and 
really printed it in, in a small guide and also put it into the package. So what you already said, like like the car car stereo stereo, uh, where you have the, the the guide how to mount it in your car, it was already included, so you don't have to search for it on the web or to ask your friends. So this is something you can also use um, with the online content. So just print it out, make it nice, put it into the package, and then you could also satisfy uh, with the online and digital content offering users which don't have um, or which are not that, that that online driven, you can still satisfy them with the with the content. So the content can be bene can be a benefit for, for a lot of channels, online, offline, and so on. And, and also, also also one thing you should keep in mind: um, people like to link to to um, to ref or to or reference good content and good guides instead of just products. So if someone is searching. Um, in, in a forum for, for a guide how to mount a TV, and nobody would just link to a product, but if there is a good guide on the web and, and a big brand is writing about it, you may also get backlinks, you get social signals, so you get a lot of trust KPIs where Google things will think, okay, you are definitely a, an authority in a brand and you should be in the top positions. I, I think you, you bring up a good point as far as some of those long tail search queries uh, even today, it's 2016, and we still find ourselves um, going to the forums to find answers to our questions because the brands, uh, the brands that need to have this content, are still lacking. Um, I was looking at, uh, I think I was looking at some some help with uh, working on an automobile, and it was it's an older Toyota, uh, about 16 years old, and Toyota does not have They've got that brand awareness. Everybody knows who they are, um, but the people at the dealership and service department couldn't help me because the vehicle is a little bit too old. Mm -hmm. um, Toyota's website couldn't help me, but those forums are full of all the information. So there is uh, there is still that evolution, I think, that's taking place. And slowly, bit by bit, the brands are coming on to that value of those long, those long tail uh, search phrases and queries that you know, those how-to questions that still need to be answered with good yeah. quality content. Exactly, and, and the main goal is not really is, is not to, to get directly a conversion, but to, to satisfy the customer. And I think that's quite important to, to keep in mind. We don't want to have additional content um, to, to drive more conversions. We want to have additional content to be the authority um, for a specific, in this specific industry and also to provide a, a really good customer experience. Well, fantastic. Uh, Mateus, thank you once again. Uh, appreciate your time. Fabulous presentation. Uh, and uh, be sure to come back to the recording afterwards to, to review it. Um, and uh, reach out to Mateus on Twitter and say hello, ask him further questions. Um, but uh, we're out of time for this section, and we'll, we'll be moving on. Um, I'll say... Um, I, I don't know what the uh, what would be the the German parting the 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 polite phrase. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen is right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Thanks uh, for having me and um, have a nice time with the with the rest of the of the conference. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye bye.